This lesson is a quick review of regulation of gene expression. In other words, how do you control what traits develop from what genes we have? So what I have written first is, is the central dogma of molecular genetics, the idea that information flows from DNA to RNA. Uh, I've expanded a little bit to include RNA uh, being processed to become messenger RNA or mRNA, uh, which is used to create proteins which give us our traits. I've included one other concept here is that DNA is also the instructions to build more DNA. And this process is called replication. And that process occurs in the nucleus of cells. Of course in prokaryotes, like bacteria, that occurs in the cytosol or cytoplasm because they have no nucleus. The next step in the central dogma of molecular genetics is DNA producing RNA and that's called transcription. It also occurs in the nucleus of eukaryotic cells because that's where the DNA always stays. The next step is called processing also occurs in the nucleus and includes the process of splicing the introns out of the RNA, splicing the exons together, uh, adding a special modified guanine called a 5' prime cap and multiple adenine nucleotides at the end called a poly A tail. Then the messenger RNA is ready to ship out of the nucleus. It passes out of a nuclear pore into the cytosol and goes to a ribosome. That's where the process of translation occurs, which is messenger RNA being used to produce proteins. And that occurs at the ribosomes. Finally, after the protein is produced, we're going to call the last step expression or gene expression. Although technically the entire process uh, from DNA to traits could be called gene expression. And in any step along the way, the process can be controlled or regulated. For example, the simplest way to imagine changing a trait of an organism is by altering the DNA directly, and that happens through mutations. So I'm going to put that in the DNA stage. Mutations occurring in the DNA, including point mutations, which is a change of a single base, or frame shift mutations, which either adds or deletes bases and shifts the reading frame at the ribosome, produces different proteins. Other types of gene regulation occur at each stage. For example, transcription depends in eukaryotes upon transcription factors. Transcription factors are types of proteins that bind to the DNA and help the DNA to begin transcription, to bind to the RNA polymerase enzyme that will build the RNA. And so there are different kinds of transcription factor proteins. Some are called enhancers. Others are called activators, and each of these kinds of proteins binds to the DNA and increases the likelihood of transcription occurring. If they don't bind, then the RNA is less likely to be transcribed. In addition to messenger RNA, scientists have come to realize that there are different kinds of RNA, including ribosomal RNA, or rRNA, transfer RNA, or tRNA, uh, even RNA that's used to build spliceosomes. We could call that spliceosome RNA. And recently, uh, in the last several years, it's been discovered that small interfering sequences of RNA or extremely small pieces of RNA can also be out in the cytoplasm or cytosol floating around and when the messenger RNA is produced, will bind to sequences on that and prevent it from being translated in the ribosome. These short sequences of RNA that interfere with translation are called SI RNA, or short interfering RNA, or micro RNAs. And there are also ways to regulate gene expression because the more of those that are out in the cytosol, the less likely it is that the message will be translated into protein. They'll interfere with the messenger RNA first before it has that, that chance. Now, the spliceosome RNA, depending on which spliceosomes, uh, which spliceosome is being used or how it's being used, can give an alternative RNA splicing which is another method, we'll put it in the processing stage. The alternative RNA splicing can, can result in different proteins being produced from the same gene depending on which introns and intervening exon sequences are removed during that splicing process. During the translation process, different chaperone proteins help the developing protein to fold into the correct shape. So these chaperone proteins or chaperonins are active during the translation stage and can also regulate 
gene expression, resulting in a different protein from the same gene. After the protein is built, there are a variety of ways proteins can be modified. These would include adding chemicals to the protein, such as uh, methyl groups or a phosphate group or other chemicals. Uh, this may be done in the Golgi apparatus or proteins could also have the ends removed, either the start or the end of the protein. They can be cleaved into pieces. Also, multiple polypeptides can combine together to form a large quaternary structure protein. Another process that can occur or another process that can be that can occur during the translation process is that RNases, which are enzymes that degrade messenger RNA, can destroy the messenger RNA before much of the protein is built. The more of these enzymes that are available in a in the cytosol of a cell, the less protein would be produced. And even after the protein is produced, enzymes could degrade that protein or denature it, uh, resulting in a non-functional protein. Some gene regulation mechanisms involve changing the DNA directly, such as mutations, or the message from the DNA, such as the transcription factors, the splicing, the micro or SI RNAs. However, there are some gene regulation mechanisms that don't involve the DNA directly, that never change the DNA, but instead involve chemicals that interact with the DNA thus affecting the inheritance of traits without directly affecting the DNA. These mechanisms, instead of being genetic, are called epigenetic. Two examples would be histone acetylation. As acetyl groups add to the histone proteins, it removes the histones from the DNA and makes it more likely that genes will be transcribed. And another one, DNA methylation, is adding methyl groups to the DNA molecules which prevents the RNA polymerase from transcribing them. So DNA methylation would decrease the likelihood of a gene being transcribed and a protein being produced. So these epigenetic mechanisms allow an organism to adapt to its environment or to pass information to its offspring about the nature of the environment through diet and uh, chemicals that could be released in the body during stress that would would influence the expression of the organism's DNA without directly changing it. Thus it can respond, organisms can respond faster to changes in the environment than, than relying just on mutations that change the DNA directly. Uh, which is exciting that epigenetics we're starting to understand how the environment actually interacts with the genes to give us the traits that we have. So you can see that from this huge variety of mechanisms that regulate gene expression control the traits that we have. So it can be a very complex process. And hopefully this has helped you review some of the basics of that.